Cancer Foundation was created in 1949 with a gift to Dr. Henry Ullman to bring a one million volt accelerator to uh, Santa Barbara, the first machine of that power west of the Mississippi. So we've been in the cutting edge since the founding of the foundation in 1949. The most Im important part of the founding of the Cancer Center was that it was a community-based effort. It was a group of people in our community that said, we need to have state-of-the-art cancer care here. We don't want to have to drive to Los Angeles or some other place. We want to have that care in our community. And people who, who lived here and cared about this community came together to make that happen. That was no small feat. We are a destination location for attracting high talent, and we certainly have. We have doctors from Stanford, we have doctors from Harvard, we have doctors from UCLA that are the best in their field. And I think that's what makes this Cancer Center so wonderful, is that we are able to attract that talent to be able to provide those services for the patients that need it most. I knew I was coming to California which was kind of a shock for me, who <laughs> wanted to get away from upstate New York winters. One night came across an article about the Cancer Foundation and about this place in Santa Barbara that was community sponsored and, and extremely well equipped. It seemed like a perfect fit for me and it proved to be true. I came here a few days before the fire in uh, 1990 and actually my first day of work at the Cancer Center was unplanned. I came in to cover for Mead Northrop and Wayne Kidder because they had lost their homes in the fire. I hadn't actually come planned to work for a couple days till our daughter was born. Great thing about this interview is that I'm talking about coming to Santa Barbara when our daughter was born and last weekend she was married, so I guess it means I've been here a long time. I'm from Southern California and always wanted to live in Southern California and I had done uh, nine years of training at medical school and residency and fellowship all at uh, Los Angeles County Medical Center. And then at that time, it was during the uh, Vietnam War, there was a doctor draft and all the doctors were drafted into the uh, service. And so I was stationed at Vandenberg Air Force Base, which was fortunate for me. And that way I got to know Santa Barbara. Santa Barbara has a lot of outstanding professional people because because it's Santa Barbara and you, I think you have to be a little cut above everybody else to, to, to make it here. What brought me to Santa Barbara, first of all, is that I married well and my wife grew up here, but primarily this was just an, an ideal place to work. It was a community that we could imagine raising children here and loving living here and it had this cancer center with this remarkable group of doctors. The more I looked, the more I realized what a special place this could be. And I was hurrying to get back before they changed their mind and hired someone else. Once you arrived, you and I kind of bonded as the young guys. And, and it was an ideal way to practice cancer medicine. As a young physician, you look for other physicians and see how they practice medicine and to try and pick up little nuggets from one individual or another. When I arrived, uh, Doug Erickson was the medical director of the Cancer Foundation and he was very involved in the tumor board and the Santa Barbara Cancer Committee, I believe is their name. He was a very upbeat, uh, cheerful person who is still upbeat and cheerful and in, in his 90s, he related very well to patients. And I think that was something that one could learn from him. Well, mostly I remember Dr. Kidder because, you know, I came from academic medicine. I had the privilege of training at Harvard and Yale, but I'd never really worked in a busy community practice and so I really depended upon Dr. Kidder and Dr. Tom Walliver to 
kind of helped me learn how you went through the day-to-day -day buttonings and unbuttonings of, of getting work done. Dr. Chapman, Chick Chapman, uh, is the first um, hematologist, oncologist to come to Santa Barbara. So, I mean, Chick basically established how you practice hematology, oncology, and then we all did our best to emulate that. That first year of, of inheriting his practice was such an amazing learning experience. I think I learned as much from reading Chick Chapman's notes as I did from all of my prior medical training. The nuclear medicine imaging was one way that we had of looking for a spread of cancer before those other modalities were available. And that was an important service, even more so in those days, because that was before we had CAT scans or MRIs. It wasn't the science that was hard. It was, you know, how do you run a schedule? How do you show up and be a good community doctor? And these, these guys were great models. That was really the most important to me, is what my medical practice was going to be like, how much support I was going to get from the community and my colleagues, and especially this board of directors at the Cancer Center, which was comprised of a dozen folks from the community who were totally devoted to making the Cancer Foundation as good as they could make it. They raised the money, they found the space, and they brought in the equipment, and they started us on a journey. We're now, next year is our 70th year, our 70th anniversary of this process, and the community has a lot to be uh, proud of. The Cancer Foundation mission was founded on the promise that we would be able to provide cancer care to anybody in Santa Barbara County, regardless of needs. And so we've, we've stayed with that promise for 70 years. The people who worked at the Cancer Center were truly remarkable and the patients were remarkable. It was an amazing experience from the first day I showed up.